Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I wasn't intending to do this video. If I knew I was going to, I would have shaved. But sometimes things come up that just kind of blow you away. And this happened to me, and this is why I'm putting out this video right now. Basically, Arctic sea ice, forget maybe, is declining faster than expected. Okay, it turns out that the cryosat satellite, which measures the thickness of the ice, hasn't been accounting for, or the, the analysis of the data from the satellite hasn't accounted for the salinity of the water on top of the ice. So as a result, when the ice is 0.95 meters thick, about three feet thick, there's an error of, there's an overestimation of the sea ice thickness by about 11%. When the sea ice is thinner, we're talking about first year ice, when the ice is thinner, about 0.7 meter or just over two feet, the error is as high as 25%. And if the ice is, you know, if the concentration of ice is 100%, those numbers I assume would be valid. Uh, if the concentration is less than 100% of the sea ice, so that you've got ice floating, you know, for example, it's counted up to 15%. If 15% of the area is sea ice, it's counted as sea ice. In that situation, you're gonna get a lot of wave action. Waves are gonna be going over the ice, depositing lots of salt on top of the ice. Uh, this study is talking about mostly salt getting on top of the ice from uh, when the ice is formed, you get the brine expelled somewhat in all different directions, some on top of the ice, and then there's snow on top of the ice. So anyway, let's get right into it. So this is a study uh, from Calgary. Okay, a bunch of Canadian authors, a bunch of Canucks. Uh, I'm gonna get the light. Okay, so of course, uh, sea ice thickness, if we're saying the ice, if the ice is really a lot thinner, um, then we have thought all these years, looking at cryosat data, then basically the sea ice volume, which is the thickness times the area, is also much lower, and therefore the ice is not gonna stick around as much as we thought, so that throws off the models. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, basically, the, the error, the um, satellite estimates for the thickness of seasonal sea ice have been overestimated by up to 25%. And this is seasonal sea ice, this is first year sea ice. This means the Arctic Ocean could be ice free much sooner than the predictions and the models, so these models you know, between 2040 and 2050, forget about it. Um, we'll see what those models uh, become when they incorporate this new data. Um, you know, I think 2020, and we may have the first blue ocean event, you know, 2025, you know, like, like it's a game of probabilities, you know. Um, anyway, ice-free summers in the Arctic. I've talked a lot about how they mess up the jet streams, the extreme weather events around the planet, etc. Huge implications of a blue ocean event. Um, okay, wide range of projections. Okay, so it's microwave measurements from satellites. They don't basically, when there's salt in the snow on top of the ice, the microwaves don't go down as far. They're absorbed easier. So therefore they measure the, the uh, distance between the surface of the ice and the surface of the water to be larger than it really is. So they overestimate the thickness of the ice. Okay, so this is a problem. Okay, so this is a, a Reuters article from a few days ago. Now, if you go to the University of Calgary website and you look at the article, um, there's a few more details on this. Um, okay, uh, Vishu N N Nandan is the lead author of this study published in Geophysical Research Letters uh, just a couple days ago. Okay, so it's seasonal ice, one-year-old ice, overestimated, thickness overestimated by 25, up to 25% due to the saline properties. Okay, this uh, calls into question measurements provided over the past decade. Okay, so we've got, been getting decade, measurements over a decade from Cryosat 2. So it, on, and uh, those need to be corrected. Um, of course, when the ice is thicker, um, this is less of a factor. When the ice, as the, over years, as the ice gets thinner and thinner, the errors get larger and larger. 
Um, also, it depends a bit on this time of, on the season because it depends a bit on the temperature. Um, so so uh, basically, so let's look at this study. The consequences of ice-free summers in the Arctic Ocean is enormous. You know, rad radically affects global weather patterns, the magnitude and frequency of extreme weather events, marine ecosystem, Arctic Ocean food web, everything basically on the planet depends on that. Okay, so let's go right into the paper. So geophysical research letters, effective snow salinity on Cryosat 2 Arctic first year sea ice freeboard measurement. Okay, so here is the key points, okay? So the role of saline snow, snow with salt in it on first year sea ice thickness measurements. Okay, we have microwaves, like from your microwave oven, basically, that frequency. These microwaves come down from the satellite, they penetrate through the snow, they hit the ice, and then they reflect back up. And then they also measure the, they go down to areas of open water between the ice, and they reflect up from that ocean surface. And from that difference, they can calculate the thickness of the ice, if they know how much snow is on there. And they've been accounting for that but they haven't been accounting for salt in the snow on the upper surface. So here we go, relative errors of 11% for an ice thickness of 0.95 meter and 25% uh, 25 for 0.7 meters. And the error goes up for even thinner ice, okay? Um, so it goes and talks a little bit about how you measure uh, the sea ice freeboard, depends on the snow load. Um, you've got this radar penetrating through and then backscattering up. And uh, let me just uh, let me just change something here. Control plus. Okay. Um, okay, so the radar goes through the snow, hits the ice, reflects back up. But the problem is is it doesn't go through salt in the ice as well. So it reflects back up and it overestimates the thickness of the ice. Okay, so that's the key factor. I'm not gonna go into all the details. I wanna go leave myself lots of time to discuss implications of this. Okay, so when, here's a key thing. When seasonal, when first year ice, FYI, is formed, brine is expelled in all directions out of the ice. So small amount of brine goes upward, resulting in a thin brine layer on the ice surface. Now, as the snow accumulates, the brine wicks upward from the ice surface into the snow cover. This wicking produces brine wetted snow, primarily in the bottom six to eight centimeters, with salinities ranging from one to 20 parts per thousand. Okay, when the snow is thicker, you get strong salinity gradients in the bottom layers, but much lower brine in the upper layers. Okay, now the brine, the salt, it affects the physical properties of what microwave radiation does. So it actually scatters microwave radiation and tricks a sensor into thinking the thickness is larger than it would be in the absence of salt. Okay, so, the brine wetted snow is found predominantly on first year ice, right? Multi-year ice, gravity pulls it down. It can run out during summer melt, winter freeze, summer melt, winter freeze. The brine runs out into the ice and out through the ice into the water below. That's not the case in first year ice. When the first year, when the seawater is freezing, it's expelling the brine. So the brine is on top of the first year ice. Now also very importantly um, is that because the Arctic is warming, it's melting more of the snow on top, so the snow is thinner, um, and so the snow cover is likely to be even more salty. Um, it, the, the concentration of salt, instead of being distributed in the whole snow column, we, will be in the, the thinner, the thinner um, wet snow. Um, also, it depends on the season. There's a difference between colder snow and warmer snow. So let's have a look at the Data. Now, I should point out what one thing this paper doesn't mention is if you have ice, if you have waves, okay, Wave, waves will, will run over ice, depositing a lot of salt water on the surface of the ice, especially if the concentration is less than 100%, which is the case for most of the first year ice. Also, as waves penetrate in through the first, 
in through the first year ice, they rock things up and down and they break it up and you get, you get a lot of runover of water on top of the ice. And that's not really covered in here. It just talks about the brine signal on top. So that makes it even worse. Okay, so you can talk about the ice freeboard um, and that's, uh, it's equal to the, rad the radar signal where the radar is reflected and also you need to add a factor for the correction factor for the snow on top, which is lower density, but does push the ice down a bit. So this is normal stuff in the measurements. Now they did field measurements on, on 53,000 53, snow thickness measurement and 213 detailed snow pits. This is in the Canadian Arctic late winter season, April, May from 2004 to 2017 on undeformed and slightly deformed or ridged uh, first year ice. Okay, they took loads of data, and I won't go into the equations and the statistics of how you, how you model it. Basically, um, you get scattering of the micro, you get the most, it, the most intense backscatter um, at normal incidence, and there's an attenuation factor which depends on the salt, but I'm not going to go into the details. So let's look at the, um, let's look at the results. So this is the, the snow, this is the so, snow thickness okay and this is they they measured the brine concentration of all of those samples and the average here for one centimeter thickness is three percent brine volume varying from just under a percent to just over five percent this would be very cold temperatures this would be very warm temperatures and then you can see as the snow thickness builds up to 16 centimeters you can see how the brine volume drops off so brine does wick up you know even if you have just over five percent it's down to two and a half percent you know uh one percent the brine wicks up okay in all cases not so much in the cold case but more in the warm case where there's more water in the mixture um okay so that's the first key factor this is the snow salinity correction factor this is a this is you remember that 0 0.07 meters, which is seven centimeters. Um, these are, um, this is a snow thickness here. This is a number of pits, the red numbers that they looked at. This is the data for the correction factor due to the salinity of the snow above. And these numbers here, this is about seven, this is in centimeters. This is about seven centimeters or that 0 0.07 meters. Okay, that's where that 7.07 .07 comes from in the correction factor. So it's from the data. Um, now this is a very interesting plot here. This is again the snow thickness. Um, zero, this is at the ice surface. This is a couple centimeters into the first year ice. And this is going up to 16 centimeters, which was a typical snow uh, thickness in the measurements that they made. And this is a cold case here. This is a warm case here. This is a normal case in between. This is the penetration through the snow of the uh, microwave signal. So if it's wet, uh, it doesn't go in as far. If it's very cold, it goes all the way into the ice and even into the ice a little bit. And in the middle here, it comes down here. So this is the seven centimeter or the 0 0.07 correction that we talk about. This is the microwave power. Okay, and now we come here to the error function. So this is the relative error in percent um, and first year sea ice thickness. So if we're talking about just under, a, uh, let's talk about the 0 0.7 case, 0 0.7 meters of sea ice thickness. It's the yellow one. This is the yellow case. This is, uh, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, this is the, the yellow, blue, and purple lines are the, uh, the, the middle case, the colder case, and the warmer case. Okay, so it depends slightly on the temperature, but at 0 0.7 uh, meters, 70 centimeters, we're talking about 20, 25% correction, 25% correction, about a meter, uh, it said 11% on this graph, it looks like it's more like just under 20. This is vital because what this means is that the all of the P, all of the volume data for Arctic sea ice have to be lowered, and it drops more rapidly as the ice is forming in the fall, et cetera, et cetera. The thickness is wrong. Thank you.